the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As children, we live close to Mount Higby, which you can see in Meriden's on the side of I-91 as you head south towards New Haven. And it was a wonderful object of ours to climb to the top of that mountain. It was only about 300 feet tall, but we thought it was Everest. But how to get there, because it's on the other side of I-91. We didn't tell our parents what we did was we crawled through the sewers underneath. We were 10, nobody was supervising us. We didn't have cell phones, and we only told them when we were 20. But she went under there and then out of the depths of the earth climbed up this great mountaintop and we stood there breathless. It was just wonderful, a great view. Maybe you go to Case Mountain in Manchester, maybe you go over to Simsbury, up to the Hubline Tower, which is about 165 feet tall, but you can see from that vantage point, maybe Long Island Sound, as far as New Hampshire, but it takes your breath away. We see this mountaintop, Jesus. Last week we saw Jesus tempted, but atop the temple in Jerusalem. And the whole time you're wondering, what's he gonna do? Can he throw himself from the temple and be caught up by angels? This week, we get a view towards Easter. Jesus transfigured. And that's our experience of Lent. When we look at Lent, it's about our transformation because we have to cooperate with God's grace to change those things. Can you see what your life is gonna be like at Easter? Is it just gonna be crossing the finish line or are you gonna be different? You're asking the Lord not just to give up a certain thing, but to change this thing, the entirety of your being. Jesus ascends Mount Tabor, that point of transfiguration, and in the distance, he can see Jerusalem. He has to go through Good Friday, but it's also the place where he's going to rise from the dead. Now, you've been at this since baptism. Since baptism, you've promised that you're going to be different because Jesus changes your life. You've just heard the words of the gospel proclaimed by the scripture, proclaimed by the deacon and the lector, and it should make a difference unless you weren't paying attention. It's very easy to drift in prayer and to be distracted. But what are you asking to change this Lent? Are you gonna be more virtuous? Grace builds on nature. What characterizes you as a person already? Are you prudent? Are you just? Are you temperate? Are you courageous? We thought we were courageous climbing underneath I-91 to go up Mount Higby. We really thought we were heroes. We were stupid, but that's beside the point. Are you faithful? Are you hopeful? Are you loving? Ask yourself, if you could view towards Easter, what will your mind be like? What will your heart be like? What will your soul be like? God acts in history through people. That would mean you, and you, and even you. God's going to act through you, but first you have to listen. We have great prayers that we memorize, and we get them down pat, and everyone snaps together and says them, and we throw it at God, and then don't wait for a response. We need, in a way, in prayer, to practice living in heaven. What is it like to be with your favorite person? It's not work. The one you love the most is no work, it's a joy. A uh, pop artist and musician uh, made up a, a lyric, a song. It says, uh, I will become what I deserve. Kind of captures Lent. What do you deserve? What have you done? We all want a break, we want mercy at the end, but what are we doing now? Or as the Marines would say, if you don't prepare, prepare to fail. Are you gonna be a failure at Easter? You don't want that either. The time of your transfiguration is now. Years later, when we got our licenses in Meriden, we discovered there was a road that we didn't have to go through the sewer. Like I said, stupid. <laughs> We never noticed. There's a better way this Lent. Make use of the fact that you're gonna receive grace from this Eucharist, from one another's presence, from this word, that you have the goods 
And it's important because it's what you're longing to do. You want to be the best version of yourself. This is true. But first you have to have a vision. What do you want to become? You're cooperating with God. You have free will. You can do whatever you want. You can make a complete mess of everything. You can go about it the wrong way and climb through the sewer and think you're a hero. In actuality, take the high road. Look to the mountaintop. Look to the future and see what God calls you to be.